Brother Simon's uh, Brother Simon's 114th article got us good. Oh, uh, did I really have to write that? Isn't it kind of self-evident? Apparently not, considering I'm writing this article. The thing is, the God of Christianity, God of that Mr. and Mrs. Born Again present to the world as the true God is neither good nor the true God. First, to be the true God, you got to be good. Let's look at that myriad ways the Christian God fails the simple test. The Christian God creates a race of flawed humans, gives them free will, then says you better make the right decisions in your very short lives. Like believing in my son or I'll burn you forever, infinite torture for a finite sin. I mean, I remind you how fucking sick this is. A hell of a lot of sicker than me using the word fuck, according to Mr. N this is born again. The Christian God has got nothing to do with this creation. Creation of evil. Evil kind of wrecked his plan, actually. And now he's engaged in a serious battle against Satan for the souls of all mankind. The battle the Christian God appears to be losing. Considering how many billions of humans Mr. and Mrs. Born Again say are going to be tortured... In hell. Hmm. The Christian God does not. Not being in control of his creations. Which make. Which must include Satan right. Is not a characteristic of. A good God. Just saying. The Christian God sent his son. To save the world. But in order to. Be truly saved. One has to. Believe in his son. By means of conjuring faith within oneself. If one doesn't, guess what? Yep, the Christian God is going to torture you forever in the fires of hell. Yeah, that ain't go ain't a good God if you've been playing, paying attention so far. The Christian God hates nudity and sex, rock and roll, and dancing and booze and whatnot. But he's totally okay with burning unbelievers. Pot demons he claimed to have created forever in the fires of hell. Hmm. Can you guess what I'm going to say? Yeah, that just doesn't... That just don't sound right. Sound. That just don't sound like a good God in my book. But that's just me. If I could go on, but I just threw up in my mouth. I'm going to have to watch it out with some whiskey. I'll be right back. Okay, that took a double, but I'm done with that bad shit, insane, psychopathic god of Christianity. I'm ready now to discuss the characteristics of the true god. The true god takes credit for creating both good and evil. Dig, former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh, make all these things, Isaiah 45, 7. Question, why would the true God admit to creating evil? One, it's all about the contrast principle. I.e., how can one know good without evil, light without darkness, etc.? Two, if the true God is in control of evil, which he uh, admittedly creates, when evil is eventually conquered, for Christ must be reigning until he should be placing all under all under all his enemies under his feet, the last enemies being a abolished death. 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty five through 26 Isn't it nice to know that in the hands of the true God you know the good, of, the good God? Evil will never rear its ugly head again because it has served his purpose. After all, it is an experience of the evil Elohim has given to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. Ecclesiastes 1.13 Experience not an eternity of evil, which is, which is what the mythical hell would be. Evil is necessary, but evil is also temporary. The true God is the only God, is the only being with free will. Dig all is of God, 
1 Corinthians 11, 12. Not enough for you, dig. God, who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will, Ephesians 1, 11. One more, you skeptic. God himself gives to all life, breath, and all, Acts 17, 25. In plain English, humans don't have free will. God wrote the, the script for it for your life a long time ago, way before you were born. What happened must happen. King David understood this. In my days, all of them were written upon your scroll. The days that they were formed, when there was not one of them. Songs 139.16. God knows what's best for you. After all, you're his creation. So what's his end game? Well, he's going to become all in all. 1 Corinthians 15.28. So... It behooves him to save all first, right? The true God is the Savior of all mankind. Did what Paul, the Apostle of the Nations, wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the true God's power, faithful to saving, saying, and worthy of all welcome, be worthy of all welcome for. For this are we toiling and being a reproach that we rely on the living God who is the Savior of all mankind, especially believers, 1 Timothy 4, 9, 10. Let's go back to the scriptural truth about how the true God alone has free will. So what, what is his stated will? Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 2, 4, our Savior God who wills all that all mankind be saved and come to, into the realization of the truth. If the true God is operating all in accord with the Council's will, Ephesians 111, and his will is that all mankind be saved and come to the realization of truth, 1 Timothy 2, 4, you honestly think that the true God won't get what he wants and wills? I'd be careful about answering that question, Mr. and Mrs. Born Again. The true God's grace saves us through Jesus Christ's faith. Dig, for in grace your faith are you saved, and this is not out of you, it is God's approach present. Not of works, least anyone should be boasting. Ephesians 2 8 through 9. Jesus Christ's faith is faith in going to the cross saved us, but the, that faith is given to us in God's grace, favor granted to those deserving the opposite. It is not faith we summon from ourselves, that, that is not uh, out of you. This faith is a gift of God, God's approach present, so no one, you know, I'm looking at you, Mr. and Mrs. Born Again, can boast that their faith got them saved while Mr. and Mrs. Bartfly didn't get saved because they couldn't or wouldn't summon faith from within. The true God is love. This time, I'm going to let the scriptures do all the talking. Dig. God is commending this love of his to us, seeing that while we were still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Romans 5.8. Dig, what shall be separating us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Romans 8, 35. Dig, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor messengers nor summities nor present nor what is impending nor powers nor height nor depth nor any creation, other creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 37. Through 38. Dig. Now many our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God our Father who loves us and is giving us an Ionian consolation and a good expectation of grace be counseling your hearts and establishing every good work and, and word. To Thessalonians 2 16 through 17. Dig. Now may the Lord be directing your hearts into the love of God and into the endurance of Christ, to Th Thessalonians 3-5. Dig, God being rich in his mercy because of his vast love with which he loves us, Ephesians 2-4. through four. Dig, become then imitators of God as beloved children and be walking in love, Ephesians 5-1-2. through two. Dig, beloved, we should be loving one another for love is of God, 1 John 4-7. Dig, God is love, 1 John 4, 8. Yep, that about sums it up. The true God is love. Y'all know, y'all just can't say that about the Christian God.